Hey YouTube, we're here today to look at the brand new Kenwood DDX 9903S Exelon Double Din CarPlay compatible Android Auto compatible head unit. That's a mouthful. This was announced at Consumer Electronics Show in January of 2016 and just released by Kenwood in late June. I've had it in my car for about six or seven weeks now. I like it. There are some quirky things about it, but let's have a look at it. First things first, the previous generation Kenwoods had a reputation for having slow boot up time. So let's see what this brand new 9903 does. Key is on. The next thing you're going to see is a warning screen that will pop up. There you go. That was about six and a half, seven seconds and we're getting audio coming out of the system now. So not too bad. You cannot get rid of that warning screen. It comes up every time you turn on the radio. Um, so here's the main interface, the main page. Let me zoom in and you can get a better look at it. Upper left hand corner is album art that in this case the radio station is pushing out via HD radio. It will also show album art for uh, Bluetooth, CD, that type of thing if it's embedded. Clock and date pretty prominent here on the display. If I click over you'll get a kind of a fake equalization view. It's real but it's, it's not an equalizer. And you'll get a compass. Um, now let's talk about issues. Uh, as of today, August 20th, uh, Kenwood acknowledges that the clock does not work correctly. Every time you turn the car off and back on again, it will reset to something like 13 hours off of the actual time. Um, they know about it. They say they're working on it. The compass is fixed at True North, will not move. Uh, they're aware of that, and they said, again, that they'll fix it. Now, you notice that I can swipe through these displays with the arrows, or I can swipe through with my finger, which is pretty cool. You're also getting a chance to see how responsive this deck is. It's one of the things I like about it a lot. It's very responsive. So that's the main display up here. Down here you have the customizable, commonly accessed settings and applications. What I've customized mine to is audio settings, mirroring. Mirroring is where, it's not mirroring like you might think with MirrorLink. This is where Android Auto or Apple CarPlay will show up. Uh, and HD radio and phone. Phone is always there, you can't customize that. And to get into the other applications and settings, you see the three that I have selected for my display. These are the other options, Bluetooth, HDMI, iPod, disc. You can swipe, USB, Sirius. I don't have a Sirius uh, XM tuner. And if you've got a, a compatible vehicle, you can display vehicle information or even a radar detector on the screen. So that's pretty cool. Let me show you how to customize. So remember, these are the three that I had. Let's say that I wanted to replace it and put disc. So I'll select. It'll turn into a box. I will move it. Put it up there. So if I go back to the home page, that says disc. And if I click on disc, it'll change the source to disc. And we'll start playing it. Pretty cool. So one of the things I found is a kind of a quirk in the behavior. If I hold and select and hold and then just let go, it'll take me into the setting. So what I've learned is I have to select hold, slide my finger off of it a little bit, and then grab it and move it. Kind of a quirk, but you get used to it. And this gear down here is how you get to settings. Within settings, AV settings, I use this to set up CarPlay. Uh, that's about it. I think it has more capability, but I don't use it. Uh, the clock, I have that turned on. The panel color, that's for the panel down here. I can change it to purple or blue or have it automatically rotate between different colors. I have mine set to red. You can upload a custom color if you'd like for a user. The background, I have mine set to nothing, to black. You can change it to blue or different graphics. Um, I've just changed mine to simple black. So that's display, user interface. You can set up parking assistance. This is how you toggle the clock between manual and GPS. Set your time zone. I'm going to put, toggle the clock back to GPS. It does have a GPS antenna, even though this is not a navigation unit. And it uses the GPS, well, it should for the compass. We know that doesn't work yet. And it does pull in a signal for the clock. So no adjusting for daylight savings time. Camera, this unit supports both a front and rear camera. I have neither set up at this point because I have a rear camera set up through my car, a factory rear camera, but it will support two cameras. Special, I don't mess with this. Um, Bluetooth is where you pair a phone. It's pretty 
self-explanatory, and security you can turn on or off. So those are the settings for the setup. So we're back to the main display. Let's go through HD radio. So it takes me back to radio. Presets over here on the right. Um, I can get expanded information on the presets, which is kind of cool. Uh, you set the presets the way you would normally. Tune in a, a signal, press and hold, it'll lock it in as a preset. Because it's HD radio, I can get more information about the about what's playing. If I select a different station, you see the HD is in gray right now. That means I'm not getting the digital signal. I am getting it analog, and then once it locks into digital, it will go orange just like that. Over here, if I want to, I can program in the direct frequency. I don't know why you would ever want to do that. I can choose whether I want to receive digital only, analog only, or auto. Um, auto memory. I can search for different types of stations. Um, search, and it will start searching through to find those kind of stations. I'm going to go back and select that station. So, pretty straightforward. That's, that's FM radio. I can cycle through how I want it to search. Do I want it to search through my um, only my presets, only clear stations, or stations that come in clearly, or manually? I don't tend to use that very often. Now, let's go into audio settings. This is where this unit uh, really shines. This is how you access it through the audio. Let's start out in right with the speaker settings. When you first set up the unit, you choose what size car you have, what kind of car. You choose the speaker size. You choose the speaker location. It uses all of this information to set up digital time alignment that I'll get to in a little bit. I can set the sub up, the rear speakers, again, where they're at, what size. And then here's a really cool capability where I can set up, it says crossover. What you're really setting up is the high pass filters on the fronts and rears and the low pass filter for the sub. So here's the front and I can adjust the high pass filter. I can change the slope, have it be more aggressive or more gradual. Um, And I can, if I want to, I can dial down front, rear, or sub. Same thing for rear. And then sub, I set a low-pass filter. And you can choose to invert the sub. So that's speaker crossover and really setting high-pass and low-pass filters. Equalizer, we have a 13-band equalizer with a whole bunch of presets. Pop, easy, powerful and user customizable settings. Pretty straightforward. One cool feature, I can have the graphic equalizer setting apply to only the source I'm listening to right now, or I can have it apply to all. So I can have a different equalizer set up for CD, Bluetooth, CarPlay, HD radio, Sirius, all the various sources. So that's pretty cool. So that, that was equalizer. Now we go into position digital time alignment. I really like this. It really does a nice job of customizing how the sound stage moves around the car and set up for your listening position. I have it set up for front left right now. I can adjust the distance and the delay. I can also adjust the level for any of these speakers. I can also choose where I want the, the priority where I want the focus. I can have front all left priority. And I can adjust and start fine tuning again the sound stage. Pretty cool. I'm going to say front left because that's what I have it set at. So that's position and digital time alignment. Fader balance is pretty straightforward. With your finger you can front back, left, right. Very cool. And then click that to recenter it. Volume offset. All of the various sources, you can choose to have them be louder or softer. So if you've got if you have a source that typically plays too loud or too soft, you can adjust it here with volume offset. Zone control. The radio does support two zones. I only have the front zone, 
so you, there's nothing to select there. And then the sound effect. This is pretty cool. Bass boost is pretty self-explanatory. Uh, loudness, self-explanatory. Drive equalizer. What Kenwood says is it, is it reduces the driving noise by raising the bandwidth, whatever that means. I really don't know what that means, but it, I know it sounds better with it turned on. Space enhancer is off because it's not a, it's not selectable with, with HD radio. If we were playing a CD or Bluetooth or CarPlay, this would allow you to choose small, medium, large, or off. And it does make the space feel bigger when the as you go up to larger uh, space enhancement settings. Supreme. Kenwood says that this restores sound lost due to audio compression to a realistic sound. Um, so if you've got MP3s, compressed files, I don't know if it actually does it. I just know that, again, it sounds better with it turned on. Realizer, Kenwood says, it virtually makes the sound more realistic using the digital signal processor system. I'm not really sure what exactly it's doing, but I've played around with it and I like number two setting. Stage EQ is really cool. The Stage EQ moves the sound stage up and down. Low is down around your lap, middle is about your chest level, and high is up around your head. It actually does work. You can, you can hear the sound stage moving up and down, and so this is set to your personal taste and personal preference. Uh, again, a, a really nice digital signal processing capability. So those are the audio settings, and again, this is where this unit really shines. Now, as I go through this unit, you can get a sense for how responsive this thing is. When you touch, um, this thing responds right away. There is no delay, there's no lag. So let me plug my phone in and show you what it looks with CarPlay. Look, it looks with CarPlay. So you saw the CarPlay logo come up. It automatically kicked into CarPlay. Um, one of the questions I had was, can I listen to FM radio and still be in CarPlay? And the answer to that is yes. So we have radio playing right now, and I can cycle through all of my CarPlay functionality, and it, that's all fine. Or conversely, I can choose CarPlay music that'll play through my phone. Standard CarPlay interface. You can see how, again, how responsive this is. If I click on phone, it'll ask me who I want to call. With whom would you like to speak? Home Depot. One option is the Home Depot on Virginia Beach Boulevard. So if I click on that, it will complete the call. If I don't want to speak to anyone, I, I can go into you? contacts. I can go to recent calls, contacts, plug in a keypad number, or I can listen to voicemail. So I can select the voicemail. It will play it for me. I've got a couple questions about the Volvo. That's pretty convenient. So, again, very, um, well, let me go back in here and, and show you one of the features of this deck, um, as opposed to some of the others. Notice as I scroll, the faster I move my finger, the faster the list moves. So that's very cool, and it continues to move. It's called inertial scrolling. Not all of the CarPlay decks support inertial scrolling. The Alpine does not. The Alpine, Alpine ILX007. The higher-end Pioneers do. And all of the Kenwoods do. Um, so you can scroll. Alternatively, if you want to pick by alphabet, I can yeah. scroll through here. So let's go to music. It sports Apple Music, so I get the For You, New, the radio, and then My Music is Playlists and My Music. Now this is iOS 9, so with iOS 10 coming out here in a couple of months, Apple Music gets better, Apple Maps gets better, uh, but right now it does support Apple Music, and I can select one of the pre-made playlists that Apple Music has come up with. Alternatively, I can go into My Music. And if I go into artists, I get my long list of artists. Again, if I want to search by alphabet, I can I can do that. Again, very responsive this deck is. Alternatively, I can use Siri. 
play Pink Floyd. Looking for Pink Floyd. Here are some popular Pink Floyd songs. Click on now playing, we'll see. The Siri integration is very good, uh, although sometimes, as I'm sure people know, Siri doesn't always understand what you're trying to say. Let's go into Apple Maps. Go back to the map. Um, I can move around with your finger. There is no pinch and zoom. Uh, some, I think the highest end Pioneer, the 8200, supports pinch and zoom. This one does not. You can move it around. If you want to zoom, you have to use plus or minus. You see that I've got um, traffic information coming in. So that's pretty cool. If I click on destinations, I can go to recents or gas stations, parking, food. If I Starting route till Miss Saigon sandwich is a noodle. Alternatively, I can use voice. Navigate to the nearest Home Depot. Getting directions to the Home Depot. Starting route to the Home Depot. So that works pretty well. So that was Maps. Let's go into Messages. When I click this, it'll ask me who I want to text. My wife. What do you want to say to Michelle Mosher? I'll be ready in 30 minutes. Your message is, I'll be ready in 30 minutes. Ready to send it? So now you just witnessed one of the issues that I'm having with this deck is that sometimes uh, Siri will hang. It, it happens about one out of every 10 times. Um, let me show you the rest of the messages. So th these are the people that I have sent in messages, but because there are no unread messages, I cannot um, click on this and have Siri read the message to me. Siri will only read unread messages. If I click on one of these names, Siri will simply ask me, what would you like to say? Go ahead. So if the message has already been played, you'll never get Siri to be able to play it for you again via Apple Music or uh, CarPlay rather. So that's the top four now playing, pretty self-explanatory, that's what's playing in your music. It will not, if you're playing FM, it will not show you what FM is playing. It's only showing you what's being uh, queued up to play via your phone. Kenwood takes you back to the Kenwood interface. Podcasts and audiobooks uh, I have not used. Uh, I'm not a, I have Spotify, but I'm not using it. I have used Pandora occasionally. So if I... Click on a Pandora station I have set up. Uh, it will start playing. Click on, oop, now playing. So that's Apple CarPlay. I can go back to the home. You see CarPlay is showing as the source. And I'm still getting the music even though I'm back into the Kenwood interface. If I want to go back to the Apple interface, I can click there or I can click there. So there's multiple ways to get in and out. Also my steering wheel controls work and I can use the voice button on my steering wheel. Play Dire Straits. Here are some popular Dire Straits songs. And when you ask Siri to play music, she will always pick music from Apple Music. I think you can tell her to play from your own music playlist, but she will not play Pandora, for example, or Spotify. So folks, that is the Kenwood DDX 9903. I hope you enjoyed the video. Leave comments, ask questions uh, below, and I'd be happy to answer them.